guys, so grab your coffee or tea if you wish. I have mine with me, as always. Um, I know it's been like two months since I said that I would do this series. And so, I've been having ups and downs and I've been busy and yeah, whatever. Um, so, first, the first thing that I want to address is... As I already told you in the introduction, there's going to be disclaimers. Well, I did not write this book. I do not, well, I own the book because I bought it. But I had no, um, no influence in writing the book. You know, the copyright is not mine. Um, it is, this series is merely in order to gather information and share it with you to those of you who, um, are looking for more information don't know where to look um naturally I had a, um, a friend of mine on Facebook she kind of managed in order to gather a bunch of um information on dragons and in general that have to do with dragon magic and it's actually some of the information that um that is included in there I didn't even think of nor that I find on my own but I'm a little picky when it comes to sites because I don't know who to trust when it comes to this path. So anyway, everything is coming from out of here. Um, so there's going to be my opinions, my thoughts, and everything else. Um, I did take notes. I will be reading some of them from this. Um, and all that I said that, which were my best not to, but some things you just forget. Um, and plus it helps me in order to get my brain moving. Um, I do apologize if I seem um, hyper or jittery, but you guys know how I am. I'm typically random and I am trying my best not to make this video too long. So, um, one of the quotes that he actually put into the book, um, pretty much one of the first things that he put into the book, I found actually rather interesting a DM quote from Merlin um, from the movie Excalibur, um, Warner Brothers, um, 1981, and it goes, There coiled in the unfathomed depths, it emerges, it unfolds itself in the storm clouds, it washes its mane, sparkling white in the blackness of seething whir whirlpools, sorry, its claws are the forks of lightning. Its scales glisten in the bark of trees. Its voice is heard in the hurricane. It is so much more than a scaling monster. It is everything. Which, yes, it can be. Which is obviously referring to the dragon. So I found that actually rather interesting. I haven't thought on that, but I haven't really fully developed my theory behind this quote um, when it comes to myself but a couple of things that he mentioned um, which it kind of gives it very brief um, on the upcoming chapters which is Dragon of Sea um, Land and Sky Dragon of Sea represents the past while the land represents the present and the sky represents the future um, and my thought on that was, when it comes to the Dragon of the Sea, um, which represents the past, as I mentioned, um, it's flowing, it's moving, it's, it's physical, but at the same time, it's not solid. You know, you can run your hands through it, you can swim in it. Um, tears represents pain. Um, you know, you think of a memory that may have hurt or may, maybe even filled with you, filled you with so much joy to the point that you actually cry tears of joy. Um, and it doesn't matter, um, how much water the sea ends up I guess gathering, in a sense. You know, it's still there. 
you know, it doesn't necessarily go anywhere. It just keeps on adding to it. Um, my thoughts were more collective, but yeah. Um, Dragon of Land, <laughs> um, which represents the present. It's physical. Um, we can touch it. We can feel it. We can smell it. Um, it is here. It is now. Yes, it is part of the past, but at the same time, it's very patiently growing. Um, growing, moving, you know, us, you know, living. And so it's pretty much patient. And it kind of, the land itself, such as trees, it kind of teaches us in order to appreciate the present because at any given time, you know, it can be taken away from us. You know, you pick a flower, that flower dies. Um, cut down a tree, that tree's not gonna grow back. So, it kind of teaches us that. Now, when it comes to Dragon of Sky, which is future, air is constantly changing. It's never going to be the same. Um, you know, it's being filtered and it's it's constantly being recycled. Um, so I thought that was rather um, interesting and appropriate for Sky in order to represent future. Um, another thing is that the air, air itself in the sky, I'm not talking about weather, but it can be very unpredictable. Same thing as the future. Um, in this chapter, he gives a, um, an example of the way that his altar is set up. And while visualizing this, this altar, um, which is why I had to go and get my own, get the thing that I'll show you. But basically, his idea of the altar, which he has set up, is three ceramic bowls, an oil lamp, and a wand. Um, you know, <clears throat> the bowls create a triangle while the lamp is at the center, and the wand is at the base. Um, water is at the lower left, which would be down here if you're viewing the video. Um, salt would be on the lower right, and incense would be up top. So you have your wand going across and you have your um, your oil lamp in the center. Now, my thought and the way that I visualized it was to take away the, um, the wand and you have dragon eye. Just basically upside down. So I found that rather interesting that he had it like that because everything connects to the center, everything connects to spirit. So I thought that that was um, rather interesting. And he states that um, the bowls of water and salt form a line across the altar, indicating the receptive foundation, na foundation nature of goddess. I'm screwing this video up. But I'm not going to redo it. Give me time, eventually they will get better. I'll make sure in the left in the next one. The oil, which is fire, and incense form another line representing the projective and active nature of God. Within the spirit lamp, God, goddess and God are yet again represented. The oil joining and feeding the wick to produce the sacred flame. And both joining and becoming one bring about light within the dark, which is the balance. So it's basically union between a goddess and God within this lamp. Um, the wick would end up being God, while the oil would end up being goddess. Um, so that shows the union between both deities. Um, 
And the next section that he goes over um, within this chapter is calling on dragons, which I didn't take that very many notes. Um, it states that depending on your tradition and belief, the times you walk your circle while casting may vary, obviously. And I kind of put that into my own words um, because we pretty much already know that part unless you're an absolute beginner, which I've already discussed that part. Um, in my last video. And typically, unless you're non-traditional, you will walk your circle once, but sometimes, again, depending on tradition and belief, you can um, basically walk your circle between three and ten times. Um, I don't know. Personally, for me, if I walked in my circle ten times, I'd probably lose count and just keep on going. Until I felt that, hey, guess what? I think my circle is secure now. But. That is my thing. Even when, um, chance. I typically keep them minimal. Um, say about three. Unless I feel as if, um, it is not finished. Then I will keep on going. But. I don't have a cord, I don't have um, the prayer beads in order to keep track of my of how many times I do chant, and nor do I count, because when you count, you get distracted. Um, anyway, he goes over um, chakras, which I found rather interesting, um, because yes, Books will go over chakras, but typically not in the first chapter. Um, so, I think I will save the chakras in this session for another video. Um, due to the fact of that there is a lot more to them than what is here. Um... Let's see here. Next session, section he goes over is magic. And there is a quote from Aleister Crowley. Magic is the science and art of causing change to occur in conformity with will. Which, yes, it is true. And I agree. Sorry, this room does not black out noise very well. <coughs> Any form of magic that is practiced is not for the weak-willed. This is very true. You need to have that will, you need to have that passion, you have to have that courage in order to step forward and basically think of your goal, have your intention in mind, and be willing to have that drive in order to um, push it forward. Or else it's not going to work and or backfire on you. But yes, you need to have a pretty strong will in order to be able to perform magic of any sort. Um, next is, if you are unable or unwilling to accept the consequences of your actions, you have no business stepping into a circle and creating sacred space. This, again, I completely agree with. Um... I know that when it comes to um, any sort of pagan path, especially draconic, you need to um, take, take responsibility for your actions, for your words, for your thoughts, um, pretty much anything. Um, I believe that Scott Cunningham um, had it within his 13 Goals of a Witch, which is, you know, watch your thoughts, um, your words. Um, your actions, you know, be aware of what you're doing. Um, and not only that, but if you're going into sacred space or creating sacred space out of anger and you're going to, let's say, hex or curse someone and, you know, let's say that, you know, ends up back on you. And then, 
you know, you're utterly pissed off because of the fact that you ended up getting backlash, well, you're the one that stepped into sacred space, you're the one that created it, you're the one that put that out there. Don't be pissed off at that person, you know what? Be pissed off at yourself for even doing it in the first place. And not, not everything is solved by magic. That's another thing. Not everything is solved by magic. You have to actually do your part first, see if that works, and then if it doesn't, maybe perform a spell or a ritual in order to give it that little extra oomph in order to um, basically achieve that goal that you have set within your mind. Um, <clears throat> stepping into a circle and practicing magic, you are in effect saying to the universe, I freely and willingly take on the responsibility for my actions. I unconditionally accept the price required to have my will made manifest which we basically already went over. Um, you know, I mentioned the responsibilities that you need to um, basically take upon yourself when it comes to your actions, your thoughts, your words. Um, which is probably another reason for why a lot of Wiccans say, you know, may not harm none, because of the fact that they are, um, number one, protecting themselves and protecting those around them that way Yes, either way you end up getting karma, but then that way it sets the intention within that magic that you are not attempting, um, not intentionally attempting to harm anybody. Um, and he goes into dragon magic because they typically are different, um, because of the fact that you are working with dragons, kind of like when you're working with fairies in the fae. Um, that will end up being different, you know, it's different depending on tradition and belief and practitioner themselves. Um, anyway, dragon magic is not high nor low magic as it also is not black or white, it is gray. Um, this is another reason for why I say that I want to balance because it's not good nor bad. Nor is it, um, you know, high ceremonial magic, nor is it, you know, I do apologize, fluffy. You know, it's not something that you just dabble in. No. <laughs> that is the point of my last video with, um, basically beginning in dragon magic. Um, you know, it's not something that you take lightly. But, again, you don't have to be so fucking serious to where you have to watch everything that you do. And it's not... All magic is going to have, you know, different levels. Um, different strengths and weaknesses. And again, it depends on the pr practitioner as well. Um, when you seek to employ dragons in your magical workings, you are seeking to go beyond the conscious mind, tapping into primal archetypes of the subconscious and superconscious minds, which we will basically get into in a moment. Like, literally. Um, subconscious, the place where what is, what was, and what could be merge into a plateau of possibilities. Um, superconscious, also known as God-conscious, basically where you are able in order to connect and communicate with gods. Um, it is where all things are connected. And <laughs> he put this in and I had to write it down um, because it is a um, good comparison and example. But the superconscious in Star Wars, um, they basically call it the Force within Star Wars. So I found that rather amusing. Um, and we go back to, um, Dragon of the Sea represents the subconscious. It's water. Water represents the subconscious. Um, psychic abilities, um, wisdom, and, um, other things of the sort. 
dragon a land which is conscious. It's physical, it's here, it's reality. Um, this is the plane that where the majority of people exist, not only physically, but also mentally and spiritually and, you know, emotionally, psychologically, yada, yada, yada. Um, so, those two I definitely agree with. And, of course, the last, which is um, Dragon of the Sky, which is super conscious. Um, that's pretty much self-explanatory. Um... And the last note that I took for this chapter is with the act of summoning these dragons, you are reaching back into the primal abyss and foreign into the unfathomable future. Which I do agree. Again. Um but those are my notes for chapter one and I know that I had explained that I would, I might end up doing um, two chapters within one video, but with how long this video already is, um, yes, I have my notes for chapter two, but I'm not going to make this video any longer than what it already is. Um, and I do apologize for my, you know, my mess ups, but um, as I said, it's kind of like, you know, starting out in the very beginning, you're going to have fuck-ups, basically. And this is my first, um, chapter review of any sort of book on this channel. Um, typically when I do reviews, they're, they used to be essays for school, and so you wouldn't just write them out and hand them in and not really even worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, so, bear with me, but now you kind of, um, you catch the drift, but anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs>